All right, Paula, what are you working on? Okay, well, I went back to um, a, uh, can you enable the, oh, the yeah. share? Mm -hmm. I went, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I went back to a code, you know, when you're doing codes in the beginning, um, there's so many results to many of them and you just do one and search that out. So I went back to uh, one I did quite a while back and it's called um, One's Reckoning the Name of Him. That's how it read in the scripture. And um, it was like, he is sparing the ones reckoning the name of him. And so I went back to that. I chose a different skip. Um, the first skip I had was 31,441. And I went and I chose one that was 400 um, width. And um, I just pretty much started working it about an hour and a half ago. So um, I don't have too much on it yet. But uh, what did show up, and this is in First Chronicles. So here is the access term. Um, two, Islam it is two. Two, the one's uh, reckoning name of him. One's reckoning name of him. Uh, so Shin Mem La is name of him. And then right at the bottom is his name, Nod He Wa He. And so I'll read that um, in a minute. The, um, this medium blue that is at the top and the bottom, it's here twice at the top, two different skips, is um, he is sparing uh, the word um, Yod Chet Mem Lamed. Um, Echemel, he is sparing. And then in the green, uh, quite a few times, is one spearing. Uh, Ra'i, and um, you have it, uh, let's see, Yod Resh Aleph Yod, so you have Yod Resh Aleph Yod, you've got it crossing over, going downwards, uh, put a box around this one, it's going up and across, uh, Right there, and then you got to come in once down this way or going up Yod Resh Aleph Yod. That is one sphering. Um, the name of him is in the purple. So we have he is sparing the one sphering the name of him. Um, in this purple here, it's um, I added the hay for the um, uh, the. Shem, Shemu, name of him. Now, in the original table that I did, I had words that I'm going to add here um, that were like, I want to put in um, my jewels or, or special possessions. Um, I also had some things that were happening at this time. There was like, he sets a flame a lot of uh, words, phrases out of Malachi. So what was going on there? But I just want to read this um, right here at the bottom of the access term. This is in Chronicles 1, um, 28.5. You can kind of see, uh, well, here, let's uh, show you where you, whose name was. Uh, this phrase right up here. Um, and of all my sons, for Yahuwah hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of Yahuwah over Israel. So right there at the bottom of the axis term where that phrase is, it's Yahuwah over Israel. Um, and if you keep reading here, it says, and he said unto me, Solomon, my son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, 
if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of Yahuwah, and in the audience of our Elohim, keep and seek for all the commandments of Yahuwah your Elohim, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. Um, so I thought that was um, pretty good. And let me just show you what's going on where this access term starts here in First Chronicles um, 26, uh, 31. Almost every one of these is kind of got the same thing going on, but you can you can kind of get a gist. Um, there's captains of the host. Um, so there's different courses of months. And I'm not super familiar with this one. I should be in Chronicles, but um, this one, let's see, is uh, 26.32. Let me back up a little here. And his brethren, men of valor, were 2,700 chief fathers, whom King David made rulers over the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Anashe for every matter pertaining to Elohim, to Yahuwah, and affairs of the king. Now the children of Israel, after their number, to wit, the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers that served the king in any matter of the courses, which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year of every course were 20 and 4,000. And then it goes on to list all these different courses. Um, you can see how all these letters in the access term, this kind of, uh, not the purple, but the, so all of these right in here are all describing those different captains of the host for the month. Now this one right here, where um, his name is Shamu, um, is First Chronicles still. And that is, let's see, let me see, that is the purple 29, 29, 6. Oh, let's see, where did I go? 29, 27. Let me go back here. Um, then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work, work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of Yahuwah of gold 5,000 talents, 10,000 drams, and of silver 10,000 talents, and of brass 18,000 talents, and 100,000 talents of iron. And they were with whom precious stones were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of Yahuwah by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Um, so, you see what's going on here. It's um, if the ones reckoning the name of him are he's sparing. So for us today, all these words will come into play. But when you look at the scripture, that kind of are like in his, um, they're the ones doing the things for the temple, the courts, the they're on a schedule, they've got a job for the months. So I'm really looking forward to getting to work on this a little bit more. Any questions or anything you think I should look up in this?
What is your skill? Oh, it's 400. Wow. Yes, That's just 400. so cool. Look at all that. Yeah. Well, and I, in my other one, my jewels was right there by the access term. And I, since I just read about that, I, it's got to be in here somewhere. Um, even if it's just in the plain text, it'll, sh you know, we could look where it is right now just to see where it would show up. Uh, let me see what color I have here. It'll just give you a little clue too. I notice your colors are Barney colors. <laughs> you know, you Barney. Know, yeah. <laughs> Why do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's happened with me too. I'll, I'll get some green and purple in there and I'll be like, why does my table look like Barney? <laughs> Let's see, I came before Barney, so I don't, I don't make that connection. <laughs> I've okay, had so a lot of Barney raising three, three boys to oh, like three years old. Fun. They're all newborns. So here we'll look up. It's the word spelled um, Samek Gimel Lamed Hey. So let's see. Samek Gimel Lamed Hey. And it might be all over. I don't know. Oh, there. Well, so it's not there. Okay, so we'll go on to other words. So that's what I'm in the middle of. <laughs> Very cool. Who's got something to, to share? Anybody seen Chris? Is he doing okay? I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, I texted with him two days ago and he's not been well. And also the people that live above him has had a lot of fights and stuff. And he said it was not a good environment for him to be doing codes publicly. But uh, he said they're being evicted. So he sh there should be more calm in his place. But I know he's not been well. Well, Doug and Marty, you guys working on anything? I haven't been well either. My husband and I have been very sick. Say that again. I wasn't able to hear. I don't know if we have this feeling well, whether we have cold. I can't make out anything she's saying. Is she talking to us or somebody? And I don't. No, I uh, want to. She's, uh -huh. she's saying her and her husband are sick also. Oh, I didn't know if she was talking to someone in her room where she's at. Rhonda, you were breaking up when you were talking. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a request for more names, so I went and did that. in those tables that I showed. Right. And you found them? Yeah, which I could show you if you want. Sure. Uh, so this is the first table I showed you in hidden parts. So I went and added Maggie, Nancy, Carol, and Migo is Nancy and Migo that comes up under the same name. So it improved the table odds to 19 billion. Uh, as you can see, they all came up. I think it's interesting that Migo and Nancy are in the same piece of scripture. <laughs> hmm. Kind of poetic. So I'll screenshot this and put it in upload tables so that um, I don't know if they're on the call because I can't see who's on the call once I'm sharing, but um, uh, that way they can look in, look in Discord and find the section of scripture. And then I also did it. So I had, I had after the class, I've done the one about revelation. Uh, so I reran that as well. Um, and that's here. And you can see they came up here as well. So
So they're also all in this table also. So again, I'll screenshot those and put them on Discord. And then I, um, well, this is kind of personal, but I um, was asking you about my wife. So he said, do a table. So I'm not gonna show you the full table, but I'll show you the start of the table. Uh, here, I think. I think this is it. So what I find interesting, so I, this is um, birthdays and uh, when we were married. So her maiden name is Brown, which is Brown here. And it intersects my name, Rosmanis, and then this, uh, which, which way is it? Lamed, Yod, Dalit, Hey. Where's the Lamed, Yod, Dalit, Hey? I got that wrong. I thought that was this term, but that's not right. What's that term? That's this term. Oh, that's the year we were married. Is um, at the um, interspersed in where our names connect, which is interesting. So that's the year that we were married there. And so anyway, he told me to do this table to see um, uh, what I could discern. And uh, I'm not gonna get into the details, but I thought this was sort of interesting to show um, how these things intersect. And then uh, this term here, the hey Dalit, oh, what is that term? The Lamed Yod um, Dalit hey is married. And what you see is that is also vertical and it is at the same skip as the year. Really cool. So I just thought that was a really, you know, uh, there's a, there were a number of different tables, but this one was the one that stood out as, you know, highly significant. And then the report, you know, I won't get into the report, but it's not in a very large area. It, there, there wasn't really any small skips, you know, this was the smallest skip. 6,342, so, um, and I'm not, you know, I don't find any horizontal, other than, you know, brown, I didn't find any horizontal terms, just um, vertical and then angled ones, but these are all, you know, they're all about her, so. It's the start of a table, which I've finished, but um, that's kind of personal, so I don't want to get into it. Marty, I have a question. When you're doing, co using Code Finder, and you look up an access term like that, uh, does it tell you how many places it shows up? Uh, like in, like in Torosoft, it Yes, yes, it, well, yes, it does. And, and what I do is I actually limit it. So if you have the skip range in here, you're gonna get a whole bunch of them, but I have gone into the actual term and said, don't use the default skip, just do this one skip. Oh, okay. And that significantly speeds up then finding other terms in this table. It limits you to one table when you do it this way. Mm -hmm. If I okay. were to do a range in here, I would get a bunch of tables. Uh, and, but I can't tell which of the terms is in which table. I see. And I, and I chose this one because all of the terms were in it and they were all in this unique relationship. So to mm -hmm. me, that was very significant, you know. Mm -hmm. that our last names intersected and that married and the year we were married were at the same skip and both a multiple of the access term uh, skip. Yeah, that's very cool. And that her name is uh, horizontal to yours vertical. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. But her maiden name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Oh God. So maybe a little tutorial in like early how you develop a code <laughs> and how you sort them out. Anybody else got codes? You want to share? Okay. Let me show you something I did yesterday. I, I was in bad shape yesterday. Trying to put on a metal roof in between crying my eyes out. It was horrible. So I went and spent some time on JD's YouTube channel. And uh, I realized some, uh, some things. His last video he did was exactly one day, one year to the day yesterday. And so I watched that video and um, man, it was almost prophetic. So I want to share some of that with you guys, because I want to, I want you to understand the relationship between the scriptures that JD cherished. I mean, you can go to his Facebook page right now, scroll down and you can find him talking about Psalm 50. He always talk about Psalm 50, Psalm 50, Psalm 50. He thought it was direct evidence of the rapture. <laughs> Specifically because the Messiah crawl, cries out to the earth below and to the heavens above, meaning he's somewhere in the middle rapture. You know, we, we went on for hours and hours and hours in debates. All right. Let's let's go to the eleven minute one first because we're gonna have to go kind of pick through the the forty four minute one, um, and the reason I want to do that is because he reads several uh, psalms in that he almost all always wrote read psalm every day psalms and proverbs he would read two or three of both, right? So it was an active part of his life. It is no wonder this is where I found him encoded, and I had nothing to do with it. I didn't put his name there. It's, it's exactly where the Holy Spirit led me. No. Right? So uh, let's take a look at this together here. get through some of his commercials. There we go. So I just wanted to touch base. I wanted to say, what's up? How you guys doing? And I wanted to read something that I came across just to share a little joy and hope because I know that I need some. Okay, so just some backstory. At this time, when this particular video was going on, he is, he is making it through his daughter's death. Um, he's been very depressed. He is, he has not made, I think he's made, he made three videos last year all, all together. Um, and then he wasn't very active. So the ones that he did do are, I found from watching yesterday are, are very significant. And I'm glad I went and watched them because it re, is reflective in, in his table that I worked. So the backstory is I'm talking to him on the phone a lot. I'm trying to I'm consoling him about his daughter you know, um, he had found out his daughter had a um, genetic defect in, in the heart before it was born, almost certainly going to be uh, a stillborn, okay? But JD still wanted to have hope and was asking me, is there anything he could do? He was, he was, he was considering the name. They wrote the name of, of Yahuwah on, the, on Bridget's belly before the baby was born, all this stuff. And he was, he had a lot of faith that Yahuwah was going to heal this baby. I, on the other hand, know that we can pray till we're blue in the face, but unless it is Yahuwah's will, you know, we have to pl pray within the realms of, of Yahuwah's will for our lives or for whoever's life, right? And this is why sometimes you see things happen that it seems like Yahuwah is not answering our prayer, but that's not what's going on at all. His will supersedes what we think is best. Right. Oh, so, yeah. Right. So sometimes it seems like he's not answering your prayer, but 
it's not that at all. There's other things going on. So I'm trying to counsel JD in this uh, very, I was worried that he was just going to walk away from you altogether. And he, he, he got mad at you. He was very mad when the baby was dead. And, um, it, but he, re he recovered very quickly from that. Um, but this is one of the videos preceding that we're having conversations about preacher of rapture, who we are, that we're Ephraimites or we're the church, right? We, we're having this conversation. You're going to see him mention something about that in just a moment. So he never fully come into the understanding of who, the, who we are as the remnant. He did start walking in the name, um, but he, he still used Jesus and stuff like that. And even one of his coffee commercials, guys, I, I, I kind of got a chuckle yesterday because he never would get it. One of the flavored coffee specials that he had was maple syrup and bacon. Okay. And I, and I, me and me and Darla gave him a hard time about that, but he was certain it was going to be a hit. Anyway, um, I wanted to share these things with you guys. And so you can see kind of my process of this. Anyway, it says in Psalm 94, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. I want you to just think about that. Blessed is the man whom the Lord chastens and teaches out of the law that thou may be that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. Okay, so he's thinking in his head he's being chastened because his baby's died. These days of adversity are coming until the pit is digged for the wicked. Now, to me, some may say that, you know, I'm not rightly dividing or something. But regardless, there's coming a time when those who have been chastened and taught out of the law or out of the Torah are going to be given rest from these days of adversity that are coming until the pit is digged for the wicked. However you want to look at that. I'm going to be a part of that. I hope that you're going to be a part of that too. I hope that you're studying to show yourself worthy. I hope that you're praying continuously so that you can be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. And I know some of you are going to say you're not rightly dividing. Listen, that's subjective. And you think you might know what that means, but you know, you, you know you're not necessarily the end all be all. People could be wrong. The people who hold that stance that they know what rightly dividing the word means, they might be mistaken. So there's a lot of stuff going around right now where people are trying to jump on certain buses and stop those buses or whatever. But listen, I do my own study. I, that's all I do. I meditate on this word day and night. That's what I do, right? And I got people that are like trying to get me to see it this way or see it that way i see things the way that he shows me through the word it's pretty simple you know what i've realized i fall in the middle of these two camps so i have two dear friends one one friend is way over here and he's you know way off in ephraim land and i have another friend over here is way off in church land right and that there's you know a huge gap in the middle of these two things and you know, one doesn't mean the other, and the other doesn't mean the other. They're two separate things and all that. And I, I tend to find that there's a middle ground somewhere. And I think that what the, what the Lord is showing me, come on, Bing, what the Lord is showing me is that they could both be right within reason, right? So, again, I, I tend to fall in the middle. Do I think that we're part of Israel as the church? I mean, I can understand what why they're saying that they consider us to be the scattered tribes of Israel that, that turned into the, you know, the gathering, the ecclesia. I can understand that rationale. I can also understand the rationale that, you know, when this harpazo happens, that it's going to be something totally different than nobody ever expected. I, I absolutely see that too. 
times. I think I'm in the middle as far as I think that, you know, ultimately, ultimately, at the end of it all, sure, we're all part of this, you know, family of God, if you will, right? We're all part of this family of God. So what I don't believe is that we're part of Jacob and the fact that he's in trouble, right? So if you're confessing Jesus as your Messiah, right, If you recall, you guys, I've, I've talked a lot about Jacob's trouble. And it is, it's, it's not who was punishment on, on the Jews. It's actually the, the northern tribes being persecuted by the dragon. Okay, this is why Jacob's in trouble. He never got that. He always thought Jacob or the Jews are going to be punished because they wouldn't receive the Messiah. Okay. Yeah, Yahushua or Yahusha or however people want to say his name. If you're confessing that guy from Nazareth who died on the cross, who was God's only son, for your, shed his blood for your sin, to me, you're, you're included in that. You're not part of, you're not going to go through Jacob's trouble. Why is Jacob in trouble? Because he rejects the Messiah. That's what I believe. So I've heard a lot of different stuff from a lot of different people that I respect that they're word scriptorians. This is as high as I can do, um, Marissa, without moving my microphone. I heard someone say the other day that uh, the rapture happens and Jesus comes back during the second coming. I don't know where he got this. He's not talking about me here. I don't know who else he was talking about, but I never told him about, you know, the world being turned over to the Jews and King David. So I don't know where he's gotten that from. That kind of puzzled me. Let's take. And I know that he loves Jesus, and I'm not going to, I'm just not going to get in the middle of that. Do I agree with that? You know, I've never really heard it the way he said it the other day. It certainly took me by surprise. And what that did is it made me just want to go study harder. It made me want to go do research for my own self and figure out exactly what it does say. What is going to happen? See, I'm more concerned with the fact that I don't believe that the Ecclesia, the church, Israel, whatever you want to call the world today, and you know, nobody... I believe is really ready because they haven't been taught what the scripture says. And I'm a big believer that Psalms 50 is a huge uncovering that's been staring us in the face the whole time that literally tells you there's going to be this thing called the gathering of the saints where God's literally going to call to the earth from the rising of the sun to it's going down. I don't see this quick, you know, secret thing that everyone says is this secret doctrine that, that you know, Darby invented. I don't see that at all. I see this clear Psalms that lays it out that there's going to be a gathering. God's going to actually call us and have, you know, gather us together where he is. And if you go look at Psalms 50, it says he's going to call to the heavens from above and to the earth. That's two calls for the purpose of rightly ruling his people. So think about it. And then it says he's going to gather his saints together to him. Well, where is he when he makes the call? He's above the heavens. To me, that's the fulfillment of what Jesus was talking about when he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Right? So I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep hammering this drum. And when you turn into my channel, you're not going to get a lot of sis boom anymore. I've got a couple of things working that are pretty cool. But I watch this new, I have a new little fascination with a guy that I love. He's is, is, got a channel called Mirror Prefect. Mirror, P-R-E-F-E-C-T, Mirror Prefect. And then he makes some great videos, and he made a great point the other day. And he's like, man, don't get all flashy with this gospel. Just So I think, I think this was the other side. Uh, I'm not exactly know who that is. Uh, I do know he was talking a lot to David. Langful, uh, David Langford, who, who's always on the Hagman show, who's a pastor, and he's pre-trib, all that kind of stuff. And so he had these two camps where he was falling in the middle, right? Because I was trying to convince him the name matters, man. We're Israel. There's no such thing as a church. <laughs> that is all made up, right? And and I almost had him convinced. And uh, yeah, so I don't know anything about this near prefect. Don't you 
it straight. So I can sit here and do and gloom, guys. You know, I was making these crazy videos about what's coming. But you know what? I'm sure that I'll probably maybe still do with some of those here and there. But for the most part, I'm not doing those anymore. Right? I'm going to do these straight up talking, teaching things that are going to tell you, like, what's in the Bible. Anyway, it's time to go. This is Bingo. Hey, Bing. Say hello to everybody. Come here, Bing. Look, look, look. Hey, Bing. Hey, Bing. Hey, look. All right, so that's Bingo. Let's go to the other video. We won't we won't watch the whole thing. I just want you guys to see some key points. So this is just a little bit later. He did another video in between. Um, but then this was the last one. This was absolutely one year ago yesterday. As you can see, October 25th. And I'll show you um, the comments. I'm the last couple of comments. This is a year ago when I saw the video. I told him, well, I need to talk to you on the phone. So we're, we're constantly on the phone talking about the Bible. And then this is me yesterday coming back, um, revisiting this this whole thing again. And, and it's just some things. If, if I had known how prophetic he was being about his own demise a year later, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'd I'd try to get him to come here, um, or, or I'd have gone and spent time with him. I don't know. I've beat myself up about this, but he's he's he says some things that are just re remarkably prophetic, um, particularly about his own demise. Um, I don't think he knew he was sick at this time, but I think he definitely was. He was probably even sick at the time his daughter died, and just didn't know it. So. Um, So he's talking about Jacob's trouble. So we're still in this conversation, back channels. Um, I show you guys stuff. I don't know. But what I do know is this. Something's going on today in the church and in Christian circles. It's going on all over the place, actually, where people have abandoned this concept of the blessed hope. This concept that when you see these things, look up, because your salvation draws nigh. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Because what else is there? I mean, listen. I know that for me, there's virtually no way I could get through this life without a belief that, you know, God is for me. And that he's coming to rescue me. Whether that's in my actual lifetime, when I'm still above ground breathing, or I'm in the ground and, and you know, he calls us home. I don't know. What I do know is this. I believe a certain way. A very specific certain way. And in my studies, and I study this thing a lot, this is the central preoccupation of my life reading this book right so i love this thing i love prophecy more than anything my dad just said to me the other day not the other day but you know not too long ago because you remember when you were a kid and you went to the library did a little book report on ted turner and he came back and told us that he was the antichrist you were like 11 12 years old i laughed i said yeah i remember that for sure you know, his name is Robert Edward Turner, 666. Uh, to a 12-year-old, that makes perfect sense, right? So, anyway, so I'm into this stuff, and I love it. And one of the things that, that you know, I, I hear people say is this argument that this, the rapture is a new thing. It wasn't until Darby that people started talking about that. You know, that's just not true at all. And I'm going to read you a song. And it's funny because I argue a lot. Well, I wouldn't say argue, but debate with some of the heavy hitters that you guys probably watch on YouTube about this. And they just want to, they want to see something that, or they don't want to see what's directly in front of their face. I don't understand the positions that people take and then they just entrench themselves and they're not going to move to the left, to the right, no matter what the scripture says. 
so ironic that he felt that way about me because I felt the same thing about him that he, it was right before him and he just couldn't see it. Um, I, I, we debated heavily, as he said, and I'm the heavy hitter that he was talking about. Uh, I don't know why he used that word. I don't consider myself a heavy hitter. Um, but um, even though we had these debates, guys, there was no division. We loved each other immensely. He was my br brother. It's just like that with any of you guys. And you, you know, flat earth, round earth, none of that stuff matters to me. If it's not a salvation issue, if it's not critical to the soul and making it right, because it didn't matter whether he believed in rapture or not. I believe he's with the father, right? It is, in, in the end, it was irrelevant. All of the debating we did, neither were the, you know, it doesn't matter. He's with the father. And as you saw in the first opening minutes of this, he's talking about, you know, whether he's raptured up or he's comes out of the grave. He says some other things too, but I think it's so ironic that he, he felt that way. Um, Check it out. Psalms 50. Again, Psalm 50. Now, pay attention to the Psalms that he chooses to read in this because every one of them in his, are his, in his table running through his name. Every one of them. It's remarkable because it shows me the verses that, that are dear to us, you have a connection to. It makes sense to me why I love the opening parts and all of Jeremiah as a child, as a 12-year-old. Just, just like him, I was reading the Bible and, and looking for the Antichrist, and I was consuming it like, like food. And Jeremiah 1 was my favorite chapter because I was a child, I identified with, I, with, I identified with, I, I, with Jeremiah. He was a child when Yahuwah started using him. And it was just, it, it captivated me. Well, lo and behold, that is where Yahuwah's got a lot of my information encoded. My first, middle, and last name, my mother, you know, my children, my wife, people connected to me closely are all right there with me, right? So when I realized that all the verses that he's reading in this are in his table, it just floored me because his name is sitting on Psalm 50, opening verse, ch uh, chapter 50, verse 1, Hopwood. James David Hopwood sits right on it. And then another chapter that is his favorite, Psalm 23, tops the, the name right across the first letter. And then he's got all these chapters and verses that run through. They're also significant, significant to him. And then even the ones below. You, might, you guys might have seen me post Psalm 116 yesterday on Facebook. That's in his table. And it's fitting because in that psalm it says precious in the eyes of Yahuwah are the death of his elect, right? I was a wreck yesterday, guys. I was, I was looking at his life in this table and I had work to do and I, I was a wreck. I couldn't even get it done completely. Uh, I still got stuff to do today before my Hebrews get here. But anyway, I wanted to share this with you guys um, because none of us know, none of us know whether we have another day tomorrow, next week, next year, or whatever. So it did something to me, just like the death of my own biological brother, which, which caused me to go onto YouTube to be active, to be sharing codes and stuff. It, it all came really from the death of my brother. My stepfather died right before him. He was the one who gave me the Michael Drawson Bible code book and got me interested in it. And then a few weeks later, my brother died. So bam, bam these two deaths i'm in a deep depression i'm in the bible a lot reading and it, it kind of goes from there in 2009 i went on to youtube so in in the suffering it it caused me to think about my own mortality what am i doing with my life am i reaching people am i touching anyone right so it kind of progressed to where we are today and here we are again with another death of someone who's close to me and it got me pondering again, have I, have I done enough? You know, because some days I don't feel like it. But anyway, it's been working on me. Listen to what he says here. It says the mighty God, even the Lord hath spoken. 
and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. Woo! Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of the folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest the thief thou then, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Woo. Now listen, that might have just got off your head, but I'll break it down right now, verse by verse. It's pretty awesome. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross-reference here. I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. Oh man. My battery's getting low. Ooh, I need to charge up my battery. Throw those in a commercial. It's so JD. <laughs> tell 
what happens prior and what happens after. So I, I'm not a date setter. I don't know when this stuff's going to happen. Listen, I've been thinking that Jesus was going to come back to Yeshua HaMashiach, you know, since I was a kid. I thought for sure it would have been way over by now, and I would have been wrong, right? So anyway, I noticed this sequence, sun, moon, stars, boom. And once I started to piece together, I noticed something really interesting. What causes the sun go, to go dark and the moon to go dark and the stars to fall from heaven? Like, there has to be a cause to have the effect. You guys know what that cause is? Now, he was trying to quantify what it meant by stars, literal stars like nebulas and things like that, that fall to earth. And I don't interpret the scriptures that way. We're talking, that's what the, the ancient people would have called things falling to the earth. Asteroids, comets, things like that. There's no way the earth would survive a collision with a supernova or any kind of star. But interaction from a, from a dark star, planet X, and the, and the cataclysmic events that we see all throughout the Bible, the long day with Joshua, Noah's flood, um, six hours of darkness on, when Yeshua was on the cross, all of these things, if you put them together, this cyclical event, planet X, this unknown, I'm going to call it Wormwood. Some are going to call it Nibiru. That's guaranteed fact. But this is what Yahuwah uses because he uses his creation. You won't see Yahuwah's finger coming down from heaven doing all these things, right? But you will see his creation coming together, doing his will. So when this thing comes in, he's right. We're going to see a sequence of events. Um, it starts taking place. Uh, but I disagree with him. There is no no pre-trib rapture. It is definitely tribulation going on. Uh, I was trying to get him to understand that um, the remnant is called up. They're protected in, in what's called the New Jerusalem. And I think it's a literal 10 day cycle, you know, literally 10 days because there's 10, the, the 10 days of all in between these two feasts of Yom Tura, which is trumpets. That's exactly the day he's coming back. There's no question about that for me. We can know the seasons, especially if you have the, the eight of codes, but without that, you could have figured out the trumpets is the next one in sequence um, to be fulfilled. You don't even need the codes. The codes were just a confirmation of that. Then there's these days in between, you know, Yom uh, Kippurim at the other end. That's a literal time span. It's not an exaggerated time span. It's not a condensed time span, right? What is exaggerated is the seven years in heaven. There is no scripture that tells you that. On the contrary, it, it, everything points to there's something is coming. The new Jerusalem and is the kingdom comes, right? Yeshua's prayer. I will be done. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? So it comes to us. We don't go to it. Um, we, we are called up to be caught in the air where he is, where we're, we're going to be. But where's he going? Where's he, is he in leaving? No. If you continue reading, he's, he's here. He's coming here. He's going to destroy the enemies. And we're witnesses to that, in a sense. The Bible says we're going to tread on the ashes of the wicked. So that means after they've already been destroyed, here we are. We're here, not in heaven. We're here. A renewed earth, right? So <laughs> I, we just went round and round. Um, we'll kind of fast forward this a little bit. But you can Need see. The red mirror is what we studied in Isaiah 58 this week. Say what now? What he just read mirrors what we studied in Isaiah 58. Really? Yeah. And see, you, you could go to his YouTube page and go to October 19th, literally days before he passes away. He posts some stuff about <laughs> Psalm 50. I could never get him to, you know, kind of look at a lot of scripture together and kind of put piece the puzzles pieces together. He wanted to focus on that one spot and branch out from there. And I was trying to, you know, get him to see that that's not exactly rightly dividing the word. That's that's cherry picking for one. So when he said rightly dividing all that, he's talking about me. And that's why it touched me so so deeply because I remember all this. I remember it was like it was yesterday. We're having all these conversations and stuff. And then this short time later, it's like this, guys. A year went by like that. And all of, it's all gone. He's gone. All of, all the of conversations, all of it is 
um, is irrelevant now because he, he absolutely knows more than I do at this point. So there's comfort in knowing that, but there's just something about in the in retrospect looking over through these things and second guessing the things I said, the things I could have said, you know, maybe I could have shown him something more in the codes, things like that. But in the end, it was all irrelevant um, because, uh, you know, he says something in this video about, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. It, it, I could be gone tomorrow. You could be gone tomorrow. And he's, and he's like almost prophetically, you know, he's saying something there. That's why I say almost prophetically. He didn't say, I'm going to die next year. No, he didn't say that. But the reality is he was right. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not even guaranteed next year. He would die less than a year later from saying that. And it, man, it crushed me because if we knew our end, if we knew how much time we have, man, the things we could get, get done. But because we don't know that, we take for granted tomorrow. Tomorrow is guaranteed. We'll see you tomorrow. I'll talk to you tomorrow. See you in class tomorrow right but we're not guaranteed that and so it's made me want to make every moment count and make you know my mom i was talking to my mom she's concerned about me when she saw the video and uh, talking to me on the phone and she's she's i realized that she had told me you know I'm, I'm watching your videos she saw that i was upset so it occurred to me my mom won't read the bible but she'll watch my videos. So if I want to get the Bible into my mother, I should be doing more videos about, you know, reading the Bible because she's going to watch it. So even with, even with his death, you who is doing something with it in me um, to, to drive me to be a, a, a better you know, servant. Um, but, you know, I found it really interesting that, He's, he quotes a lot from from Psalms, especially Psalm 50, but others. He reads in uh, his, his little talk here. Four, four is what I was talking about. So let's go to Psalms 4. And that's what he's doing now. By slaughtering. But I would say that, yes, we did, because we accepted Jesus, and that was a covenant, right? That's our covenant. And he, Jesus was the sacrifice, or even the slaughtering, right? It says he gathers the saints together. Now, I'll, I've had preachers and heavy duty hitters tell me like, hey, man, that's that doesn't matter. Like, that's just proof for us, because that means that this is going to happen. You know, when he gathers the saints, that's at the end, because it says that the Antichrist has power to wage war against the saints. Right. So what? You don't think that there are going to be saints on the earth after they've literally witnessed this gathering together of the saints you don't think after the earth witnesses this all the people that i've told about jesus and what's coming and they all like laughed at me and spurned it and were like you don't think that all those people are suddenly going to be like whoa after this great think about it it says gather my saints together unto me those who that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice and then it says and the heaven shall declare his righteousness when we go up, we go up shouting his name. Ready? Let's cross-reference. Psalms 74, 5. Also in his table. What does it say? Psalms 74, 5. I think it's 74, 5 anyway. If my memory serves me. It's not. It's, it's uh, Psalm 74, 5 says that he it's 47, 5 he's, he's was thinking of, which is also in his table. <laughs> Let's see. So, and you'll see, because his, his skip is only 23, 24, or something like that. So it's it's hitting each all each one of these chapters. Maybe my dyslexia is It says, God has gone up with the shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. What? God has gone up with the shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Wait a minute. Is it possible that that's misinterpreted? Because the word God there means Elohim. It's the word Elohim. So why is God going up? 
So wait a second. So for God to go up, that means that he had to come down and then going back up again? Like, show me in context in the overall scheme of the story, where is that going to happen? I think it's more better translated that Elohim has gone up with the shout, or in other words, the rapture, right? Elohim is going to be you because you're a spirit being. Once you get your new body, guess what? You're going up with a shout. And then I believe we're going to go up shouting his name. Right, because it says the Lord here. It says God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Wait a minute. I think we go up shouting his name. That's what I believe. I believe we go up shouting his name. Where it says, The heaven shall declare his righteousness. Absolutely. We're going to go up shouting his name, singing praises, declaring that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You don't think that's going to be the case when you're going up in the rapture? I think it is. So it says that he gathers his saints together unto himself, right? Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay, so if you can at least agree that that's the gathering of the saints or that word, Chessy is in the Hebrew is Chessy, right? It means like holy one, right? So like I got news for you. After you get your new body, what you're holy. You're literally like new again. You're born again at that moment with a new body. Then it says, And the heaven shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. So now interesting, right? That just told you the call that God made from above to the heavens. But what about the call to the earth? Well, let's go to verse 7, Psalms 50, verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. What? Why is he testifying against Israel? I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goes out of thy folds. Now, if, if you go and read through this, basically, the rest of the Psalms 50, it seems like the Father is going wild on Israel because they're seemingly have reinstituted sacrifices of animals. And then he says in verse 15, Psalms 50. Verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. What day of trouble? I think we all know that's Jacob's trouble he's talking about. So if you think about this, Psalms 50, it gives you a clear, clear play-by-play -play of, what, of what's going to happen. It says that God's going to call to the earth from the rising of the sun to, the, to its going down for a whole day. And what's that day comprised of? Literally, he's going to gather his saints together unto himself. And where is he when he makes that call? He's above the heavens. So Jesus says that I'm going to go prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. That's the place we're going, right? Now, I want you to think about this. What? This is the greatest thing ever. So I think about dying a lot, right? And I think about what it's going to be like to cross over, right? And, I, and so I memorized Psalms 23. I'm going to read it to you right now. But it's the whole Lord is my shepherd. When it says the Lord All right. Is my shepherd, so my see what I mean by almost prophetic? He doesn't really, he doesn't know. That you're, so we never know what our words, the words we say, how relevant they're going to be. And he's quoting Psalm 23, right? So all these Psalms, we, we won't sit through the whole thing, but it's, it's, it's very much the same thing. Let me just show you the table now. Um, and I didn't watch this before I worked his table. I went back afterwards, and, it, uh, and I realized, oh my gosh, this is all the this is all the chapters and verses he loves. All right. So J D Hopwood, uh, James David Hopwood in the blue and yellow. Here's David, right here. And Hopwood is his name, and then and then all the the chapters. Sitting look, look, this right here is chapter 50 verse 1 right here running through this this area this right up here running right to the top is psalm 23 going through there and then several of the psalms that he's he's reading from 
in the video it runs right through his name and as you can see you know he progresses all the way through the psalms we're, we're down to 122 down here um so a lot of significant i didn't have time to highlight them i just went through and i went line by line and, and read them um the year he was born the date is in the blue but it's the top is also connected to death is coming very close proximity to his name it's also connected to death in the plain text there um his his wife bridget and um heshvan heshvan four is the actual day that he passed away you see bingo is in the video with him bingo and bridget are interlocked here with two letters sharing two letters and and they're in the same line so that tells me that bingo she's probably clinching to bingo a lot right now they're, they're she's that's her connection to him because he never had an he never had a child the two dogs were like um he had two dogs bingo and cleopatra um they were like children to him and so i can see bridget clinging to this dog um ebreet or to cross over he was just talking about you know when he dies that crossing over that word hebrew or ebreet means to cross over or the ones crossing over if you if you um use it in the plural and that is the bet is the anomaly death is coming to cross over and of course that psalm that's running right through his name uh shalom in shalom is uh connected to his name in peace so uh yeah you just got me i don't know i was a wreck yesterday as i said um so many things i wanted to say to him we had some plans i was supposed to talk to him again we were supposed to do a broadcast together because he wanted me to, to find his name in the codes it was a lot, one of the last things he asked me and so i never got to share this with him he never got to see it um but i, I find it very interesting that I, I think he would have been blessed to find that his name was in the very places that he cherished i mean to me that is that is yahua revealing something about his the way he thinks of us and loves us there's a reason why there's certain chapter and verses in the Bible that you like and that speak to you. It has a direct connection to you. Your name is there. <laughs> and he probably had you in mind when you when he spoke it, right? I, I, I'm certain of that because your name's there, if it is. And so um, it's very powerful um, to see, see this. I was, I was humbled and crushed and, you know, was kicking myself that I didn't put this like on a priority thing and just get it done for him and, and get it to him. Cause I was, I was trying to juggle several things at one time that somebody had contracted me to do something really important with, you know, the witchcraft in church and things and um, some child abuse and stuff. So I was working on that project and then, uh, you know, a couple of Hebrews show up here and they wanted me to find them in the codes. And so I had like 10 things in front of me at one time and I, I just, didn't get back to it until after he died. So that's kind of messed with me a little bit. So anyway, um, I don't have any other codes because this is what I've been doing here, but I wanted to share it with you. I wanted you to see that there is a reason why there's, there's certain places you, you're, you're drawn to you. You love a particular book or something. Um, I'm very confident that we're probably going to find all of our names. I haven't looked yet. But I'm pretty confident that we're going to find us encoded in Malachi, and in particular in chapter three, and uh, where where he speaks about these ones who are talking about his name. Didn't say nothing about you know they're pronouncing my name right, so um, I'm gonna write them down. No, he said they're talking about my name. First of all, he says that these same people, these Gentiles, these nations, are going to make his name great. They're talking about my name. So I'm going to put them in a book called Remembrance. And also I'm going to make them jewels in my diadem. That's a very special thing. Names are there. They're, they're certainly those he knows already that, that are a part of that, that are there. And so, um, and it's through, it's through the whole word, guys. Just, you know, all through the Bible. 
false prophets are going to be encoded where Yahuwah speaks about false prophets. Modern day real prophets are going to be where Yahuwah acknowledges a prophet somewhere. That, that's how it, that's Ramsel method. That's how these things are going to be categorized and fall in these codes. You have no choice about it. I didn't get a choice of where this disappeared. You just showed me it's here. Right. I didn't just say, oh, would you show me in Psalm 50 if, you know, I could have probably gone to Psalm 50 and looked and, you know, but that's not the process and how it happened. The Holy Spirit said, go here. And this is what I did. Is that a skip of 24, 23, very small cylinder, almost exclusively through the whole run of this matrix. More than half of it is it runs. This is all Psalms. That's what he said to me, brother. He said, your names will be encoded where it says in Luke, knock and it will be open to you. Yeah. So that's, that's, that just blows my mind. And now we, it makes sense because, you know, when I was a kid, I was always fascinated with me. He knows, all, he knows how many hairs are on my head. Even if I went and got a haircut or I shaved my head, he knows, he knows when a sparrow falls, he knows all that, all the details. And this is what makes Bible codes so impactful for me is that level of detail is impossible to be an accident and even still even christian critics who can't wrap their mind around that even with phds will jump out there as a critic and say well yeah you know there's not really any bible codes it's, it's, it's you know it's very subjective you can find codes in any book they have all this wisdom got these diplomas and a phd on the wall behind them that they cherish right all this wisdom and it doesn't occur to him that the same elohim who spoke to moses in a burning bush the same one who parted the red sea these same ones with the with the peanut brain even though they got the phd want to put you who in a box and say no and it doesn't happen it's impossible it can't happen just blows my mind so i take comfort in seeing this I spent a lot of time in these codes and I'm, I'm certain I'm certain that this is for the end time render. There's no question. That's who he made it for. That's who he put it there for. Not for the rabbis, people doing Kabbalah and all that stuff. Even though they, they may have found it first, it wasn't for them. That's evident just by looking at Glazers and looking for the Messiah all this time. And he's been there in front. I mean, I can go to any one of his tables about Messiah and find in the plain text or in the you know some sort of vertical anomaly right next to the access term the messiah so that tells you right there these rabbis don't have the connection to the to shamayim like you do why because yeshua bridged the gap to the father you've got the bridge and you now you got the keys right he's given it to us so I thank you, Father. Did you hid these things from the learned PhDs? But who did you give them to? You gave them to the babes. You gave them to the Paulas. You gave them to the Ingas and the Leahs and the Phyllises and the Shelbys. That's who he gave it to. That's why you guys are here. You are very special to the Father and you're very special to me. Um, I take It's an honor for me to, to show up here every class and, to, and to spend this time with you guys. I love you dearly. Just as I love JD, each one of you means something to me. If anything happened to you, I would be just as devastated. Um, so it's important to me to be a good leader and one that brings truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you because that's the wrong thing to do. It's, it's not right for us to sugarcoat things just to make people feel better. You know, I don't want to hear the band playing on the Titanic to give me the impression that the ship's okay. And that's what they did. They told them to keep playing so people wouldn't panic. Some people want to just feel, you know, they, they would rather put their head in the sand, go back to sleep, whatever you, you want to do. But there are some who want to know the truth. They want to know the brass tacks, as J.D. says. They want to know the bottom line. What is going on? Is the ship going down? Is it not going down? It appears like it's going down. And so that's what I bring to you guys. I bring to you the bottom line, the, the truth. As painful as it can be sometimes, especially when you're one day you're showing everybody there's a pre-trib rapture or telling them that. I couldn't show it. I could show rapture, but I couldn't show pre-trib rapture. 
I can see in the codes that there is a gathering. There's no question about that. He's going to gather. So we can see that in the plain text, the codes confirm it. But what they do not do, and they often contradict when you try to force a round peg into a square hole, the scriptures are pointing to there is no preacher of rapture. Types and shadows don't cut it. Okay? We need hard. The Bible says two or three witnesses. You need two or three witnesses to establish a thing. Not two or three types and shadows. Right? This is how we get into problems. Bible codes gives us a way to, to reconcile these things. It's not a matter of opinion anymore. Right? And that's been the problem. You got all these got people out here writing books. There's so many ways to go. Which way do we go? Oh, my gosh. Right? They're not all right. They're not. They're, they're full of their own conceit and confidence from I went to Liberty University. You know, Jerry Falwell taught me or Oral Roberts or wherever they went. That's what they're full of. Dallas Seminary is a big one. You got a lot of apologetic Baptists coming out of there that are uh, on YouTube attacking Hebrew roots and all that kind of stuff. And just because they wear that banner with honor. I went to Liberty University or I went to Dallas Seminary, right? They have to have to give that disclaimer before, you know, they do a broadcast or something like that. So and so and so and so is joining us today. He's an author of six books. He's a graduate from Dallas Seminary. You hear it. Anytime Doug Havman will have a guest on, Stan Dayo, any of them, Steve, um, What's his name? Steve Quayle. They're selling books. They're selling a bunch of garbage. They tipped and they, they kind of fluff it up a little bit, and make it biblical, you know, put some Bible somewhere. But but overall, it takes you in another direction. You know, even some YouTube channels that that like to sensationalize, they like to talk about Luciferian this and CERN and, and they get into all that kind of stuff, which is OK. I'm not down in them, but they lose focus of what's really important right and uh i try even though we do talk about some things that are fringe biblically fringy you know maybe even political in some sense and the reason for that is because we're looking for the beast system and those kind of things otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it but i do try to keep us in in you know between the white lines so to speak and not off in left field looking for little green aliens in Mars and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you guys, I appreciate your patience with me. Um, I didn't know how well I was going to do with class today, especially reviewing some things from JD, because I couldn't watch those two videos yesterday without just being in tears the whole time. Um, but I did fairly well today. So. I don't have anything else, guys. <laughs> I just want you to know I love and you guys mean the world. Jonathan, thank you so much for all your sharing. I I had never heard of JD until all of this. And um and but you are right. It um I've been noticing lately that when you see people and what they're doing and how they treat others, um it's it's been a lesson to me and sometimes it's in the strangest places, but it makes me say, am I loving enough? Am I compassionate enough? Am I, you know, uh, sometimes you see somebody doing something and you thought, wow, I didn't think to do that. And it, we need to increase all of those attributes of Yeshua uh, we just need to continually strive to be more like him. Yeah. Um, and I've learned a lot of lessons lately in that, in that line. I wanted to ask you, um, this is just um, an information thing. Remember when you and Darla were on the Saturday night videos before we all joined the class? Um, what was that song or who was it by the one that went used to play it when the class was starting? It wasn't... Um, it went like, uh, I don't know, I can't really sing it, but it went like, Wahala Kola Sher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is, I could go find that for you real quick. And um, okay. that is uh, that, Joel 2. 
Oh, yeah. That is from Joel 2. I said call upon his name. Joel 2. Such a beautiful song. I think I sang that in my spirit for a whole year, and I want to put that on my uh, new little thing I got. All who call upon the name shall be saved. It's a prophecy in Joel uh, 2.32, I believe it is. Now, the translators and, and, you know, when you see someone over in the New Testament, like Paul quoting it, it has been changed to Lord. But it is not Lord, guys. It is not all who call upon the name of the Lord. If you go look at the original text and it's Joel 2.32, it is the name of Yeshua. It is not even Yeshua's name. So, you know, the fact that they, they, in the New Testament, they turn it to Lord and therefore, therefore attribute it to Yeshua changes the scripture. It changes it. It says those will, will call upon Yahuwah's name. Now, I'm not saying there's any less power in Yeshua's name, but the scripture says that. We can't just go and change it. Right. So here he is that I'll, I'll put the link to this uh what she's talking about joel 232 i played this every um every broadcast i'll put this in the chat this is the one you're talking about here yes yes yeah, okay so beautiful yeah and the volume is not very good on my um computer so i'll just put this link in there and you guys can grab it Okay, thank you. Yeah. You guys got anything else you want to share before we close today? No. Well, I can show you the notes from the Isaiah 58 slide. I thought it was pretty interesting. And then when we were on that call, we actually, this came up, his name versus Baal and Lord and all that. <clears throat> so maybe it'd be interesting to review some of those tables because they're oldies with goodies. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just like the enemy that, that he knows, if, you know, we're supposed to call on you or where two or three are gathered, right? These names have got to be done, dealt with, right? Obscured, erased, changed, all that kind of thing. Because of these scriptures that we have that are indicating it's important. Okay, let me go and try and set this up. Yeah, okay. Uh, I gotta find it. No, it's not this one. Sorry, brother. Open up the wrong file. Oh, here it is. All right. <laughs> Uh, where are we? Here. All right, you guys see my screen? So the first thing I'll talk about is the Isaiah 58 scripture study it was really interesting. This is, you can read it, um, but basically this is, I took notes from the discussion we had in the commentary of the, um, the, the um, 
whoever the narrator is. <clears throat> but Isaiah 58 is a continuation of 57, where the wicked get more wicked and the holy become more holy. In 57, you know, basically people choose to be cultists and murder children. It's, it, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because as we do the scripture study, it sounds like news headlines from today, <laughs> these chapters from Isaiah. And so 58, and this is so interesting because I thought it was a lot like Psalm 50. It says, to the house of Jacob, you call me, but I don't hear you. You're two-faced and you go through the motions. That's why he's saying in Psalm 50, I'm not going to accept your uh, offerings. I'm not going to, I don't need your offerings. Um, he says the same thing in the, in the sections here, but I'm just netting out you know, the sort of cause of that. And it's a three-part conditional blessing. The first blessing is, right, so if you aren't two-faced and just go through the motions, here's what you really need to do for me to, to respond to you. The first blessing conditions is that you untie the yoke of Babylon and abolish all forms of subjection, which, you know, can be lots of things, money, but all the different kind of idols, and don't neglect your kin. And then if that's the case, if so, then your righteousness will go before you, you will qualify for salvation, and you will go in the exodus before the destruction. And Psalm 50 talks about the exodus before the destruction, right? And so did Psalm 47 that he was talking about. Then when you call, I will hear. If you do these things, right? There's a conditional blessing. Untie the yoke, essentially flee Babylon and abolish forms of subjection. Second blessing conditional, if you extend your being to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, not just with your spare things over and above the usual, then you who will be with you continually, not just when you call, but you'll be refreshed and regenerated. You yourself will be a wellspring, all right? So it's like, all right, all you have to do are these things, and then you will be qualified for salvation and get into the exodus. So this is almost like, you know, even if you were goyim, this will happen. The second is, you know, if you're higher than that, you know, uh, and then the last part of it is what your offspring will do. They will rebuild the, way, the waste places. Uh, and and the, the, the th I think the third conditional for that is, yeah, I, do, I don't think I, um, I put that the, the conditional for that is if you honor the Sabbath without ordinary observances, treat it as a delight. There is a special blessing. Don't achieve your own ends. No secular or mundane things. Open yourself up for the Ruach. Then your offspring will rebuild the way places and you will get the inheritance they will get the inheritance of what you have done. So I just thought that was so profound and it, it's, you know, it was like a mirror of what he was talking about in Psalm 50. So that gets to the code table of the name matters. And so we did this a few weeks ago or maybe even in September. So maybe even a couple of months ago, but this was the, our father's inherited lies table and kind of tied to our time. Because uh, these are, uh, for a reminder, the access terms are at a skip of one. They're in the plain text, but they unlock a table which ties this section of Jeremiah to what's going on today. So that's what the, what the reason for that. And so in the center of this very kind of dense table, if you zoom, zoom into this part, you have the access term, our father's inherited lies, standing on that for the USA, and underneath that, my name. Then with all these terms surrounding it that tie it to what's going on today. And I believe the scripture there was, yeah, so. See, I'm sending for many fishermen, declares you, and they shall fish them. And after that, I shall send for many hunters. For my eyes are on all their ways. They have not been hidden from my face, nor has their crudeness been hidden from my eyes. And first I shall repay double for their crookedness and their sin because they have defiled my land with their dead bodies of their disgusting matters and have filled my inheritance with their abominations. O oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge in the day of distress, Gentiles shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, our fathers have inherited only falsehood, lies, futility, and there is no value in them. Uh, would a man make mighty ones for himself, which are not mighty ones? meaning idols. Therefore, see, I am causing them to know 
This time I cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahuwah. And then the other table was um, was actually um, the the so this is um, how to put this. This is the setting of judgment. It's that you have, you know, you've inherited lies. You've been following tradition. You've forgotten my name. You have all this evil going on. We just talked about Isaiah. 57 where the people choose to be cultists and murder children right <laughs> here you go there are all their names right right in this table and then um and then basically if that's what happens then i don't hear you <laughs> right so that is the setting of judgment because of that but if you do these things then i do hear you and that is so this is the setting of judgment, and the other table is around the form of judgment, but the judgment is tied essentially to this here, the inheriting of lies, following tradition, and not his word, and forgetting his name. And so that second table is this one, where this was actually a study I did uh, searching the terms that brother Chris had in his in New Madrid table and, and re, uh, finding it in code finder uh, in, in a, uh, I'm not sure if it was in the same book he, he had it in or not, but it was the same terms. And then in this table, having uh, two particular things, uh, I believe it was quake at a skip of four, which I believe is this one, in um, Jeremiah 44, 13, and then USA at a skip of two, which is this one in Jeremiah 23, 25. And so the USA talks about the elite in their secret places and the Yahuwah seeing them. Um, uh, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsehood in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Till when shall it be in the heart of the prophets, the prophets of falsehood and the prophets of the deceit of their own heart? And this is, I think, uh, Jonathan, is where you found all their names encoded, right? Who tried to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone relates to his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Yeah. This is the beginning. Okay, so um, most of the, those, uh, where, where all those names of those prophets are going to be exclusively in Jeremiah. And it starts with 23, but it runs through um like 28 because because you says basically this same thing a couple of times over and over again and like mm -hmm. chapter 27 and different places in jeremiah saying the same thing and you're right these false prophets name first and last name are right there now that's not an accident guys that is a direct statement from shamayim telling you don't listen to them i didn't put my words in their mouth i don't know who they are these false prophets that's what's happening and because of this, the form of the judgment shall be, I shall punish those by the sword, by scarcity of food, and by pestilence. He tells you the form of judgment. And so in the ISA, right, you can go and look at the Hebrew. Their fathers forgot my name for Baal. All right, so that's Baal. And if you go to the accompanying uh, names reference for the Hallelujah Scriptures, yeah. you see that Baal is Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly right. Now, logic and reason led you to that. Someone, yeah. wants, someone who just applied to the school, and she's going to be a new student, is following a, a female Hebrew teacher. I don't know who this Hebrew teacher is, but this Hebrew teacher told her, oh, I don't like that code searcher. He tells people that Lord and God are pagan names. This is supposed to be somebody teaching Hebrew. I, I, my, my suspect is she's not qualified to do that. She mm -hmm. thinks... She, you know she is but she can't get to the logic and reason will get you to this point absolute you know rejecting truth will get you what she presented to this uh, this lady i don't like that jonathan lord and god pagan names right well it is it absolutely is as you just see here it's it's amazing to me that he says you changed my name to to bail 
And he could have just as easily said, you changed my name to Lord, because it's the same exact word in Hebrew. Same exact word. So it makes sense to me. He, he doesn't want us calling him Lord or God. If you go and look at those in the ancient times, they're actually deities he despises. He's very clear with that in the scriptures. Ashtaroth, Baal, Molech, all of them. He can't stand them. And uh, here, here we are. 2,000 years later, and the translators, through the hands of the translators, he's got all the people calling the Most High two names he can't stand. <laughs> my, my son understood, and, and Rick, if you're listening, thank you for teaching me this because I was unaware that the English language is a bastard language. I never really realized yeah, that. Yeah, it's not an original language. I yeah. never realized it. Yeah, and it's the only word I can think of to, to describe it that fits. But uh, when I told my son about the, we, we talked, he knew because he had taken German and his German teacher was very adamant that people understood English was not an original language. And uh, how many words came from Germany and other countries. And he said, there aren't many that are from the Hebrew language. And I said, exactly. Now, look at which words they chose intentionally to replace the father's name. Since we had that conversation, my son has not, neither one of, none of my kids, since we had that conversation, has used God or Lord to talk about the father. Yeah, it's not a trivial thing. I mean, no. I mean, people will want to make it to that, that the, this Hebrew teacher wanted to make it into a trivial thing. He knows your heart. Don't listen to that code searcher. Well, folks, it is important. He, he shows us right there in the scriptures. You changed my name to Lord. And then furthermore, we find out later our fathers inherited lies. What? In the code, my name is connected to that? Come on. There's, there's too much pointing to. But it says to the USA. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 and where we put in God we trust on the dollar bill, which is money. God being a deity of money. I mean, it, it, it's yeah on the surface it looks good patriotism god country core that's what they pumped in us in the marine corps god country core in that order god country core family in that order god comes first country core and then family <laughs> right so it's instilled in, into us even on, you know on that level but but when we come to the truth it's it's uh you know it's a shock it's like you know you don't want it to to destroy your delusion you have right it's like everything else is wrong and what you have is right but then you start realizing oh my gosh i am wrong <laughs> it is not god my grandmother used to get mad when someone say god damn like it would come unglued you don't take god's name and day right it would just come unglued This is my dad's mother. It's a very religious woman she was. And my brother, Brad, said that one day, and she come unglued. Pentecostal woman. Now, now I'm zealous for you, for God, but never knew, the, I didn't even know the name back then. And she actually believed that his name was God. And she was zealous for the father as she understood him. And yeah, had, she, was in, she was where right. she was. She had like a fifth grade education. So, you know, she, yeah, my was a, she was a sharecropper, family of sharecroppers in Louisiana. So she didn't have a lot of education to her. That was his name. And so, but, but, you know, and when I want to think back to that, there's lots of people now that's true for Jesus is his name to them. Right. I got saved under the name Jesus, but you know what, in my walk with him, in my relationship, it, it became a personal thing. And I realized, wait a minute. Why are we not using his original name? I mean, don't we do that in any other case? In any other case in the world? Vladimir Putin is Vladimir Putin. We don't call him a translation because we speak English. The president of China, his name is his name. We don't call it some English translation. And you think about that with every everybody, anything, every, every famous person, you don't call them a translation. Why are we doing that with the name of Yeshua? Well, there's one other case. 
Yeah. Yeah, Lucifer is not a name. That's right. Exactly. And it was changed too. You're right. That's a good point, brother. That's this another place. That's title. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning the light bearer. And if you want to know his name, you got to go to a book that was removed from the Bible. I don't even know the name Gadrail. Yeah. <laughs> it's in chapter 69 of uh, Enoch. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's, it's pronounced Gadriel. God is... Um, yeah, I know it's G-A-D, but it's it's when you go look at that phonetically, how it's pronounced, it's God. It's a ah sound. It's not a. Ah. It's a God. So we are literally saying the, the name of another deity when we use the title God, right? We're, we're saying the name of another deity. What does the Torah say? Don't even take the name of these false deities in your mouth. You don't even say them. And so that's why you'll see me use um, Elohim or use his name. Or even Steve, um, Gary Steve, uh, Simons, the, the one from Triumph and Truth. I've never heard him say Lord and God. I've always heard him use Elohim, but you haven't seen him teaching why. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Why? Because that's a heavy thing to try to teach somebody. You lose a lot of subscribers like that. There is, you know, when Yeshua started talking about drinking his blood and eating his body, a lot of people who followed him for year for the couple of years he was ministering, walked away just walked away you can go read that in john just walked away from him because he was saying something they could not fat they could not understand what he was saying they, they were thinking he was saying you know you literally got to drink his blood like some cult thing right wow that's how shallow that's how shallow of thinking people are sometimes and even my grandmother god was his name to her and so did that make her not saved? No, because yeah. we're, we're, we're saved by our faith in him, right? The thief on the cross didn't go to seminary. He didn't go through all the catechism and all the things you got to do to be saved. Even to say in the sinner's prayer, Yeshua didn't tell him, okay, okay, well, repeat after me, right? He didn't do that. He acknowledged that he was the Messiah and Yeshua accepted him immediately. It was like instantaneous. You'll be with me today in paradise. It's because of his faith, right? So I got saved in faith and named Jesus at seven years old. And you who has been with me ever since, even though I didn't know his name, you've walked with me. And that's true for most Christians. I can't say all Christians because there are some who are outright living, you know, falsehood. They are self-deceived. They think that because... You know, they go and sit on the front pew every week and amen, pastor, and pay them tithes. They're good to go. That's not the case. It is not about social club. It's about a relationship. It's about loving people. You know, he said, keep my commandments, love one another. He made it really simple for us. It's not about keeping 613 laws. They don't all apply to you. <laughs> At most, you've got about 70 you got to worry about. Most of them are statutes and ordinances. They're not going to. You know, it's not something that if you break that, you're going to die, right? Things will go well with you, but you're not going to die. You're not going to go to hell because you broke a statute. He just give us a, a pattern to live by. And he said, "You, if you do this, things will go well with you. But also on the, on the flip side of that, he, he said, but if you don't, if you, if you live like, you know, this and you, you're just living like a hellion. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. You're not keeping the law. You're not keeping my statutes. He tells you, you know, you're going to, you're going to get sick. You're going to have sores. Your children are going to sick. Your cattle are going to die. Everything's going to go wrong. You go out to your car in the morning, flat tires all the way around. Everything goes wrong in your life when you're not living in his will and his, in his blessings. That's true. It's very simple. I try to get that uh, across to JD that this is, this is how it is. If we obey, obeyed his law, if we obeyed his Torah. He was just coming around to that. You could see that when he was quoting from Psalms there about the law. But uh, he had pastors on the other side telling him, the law's nailed to the cross, J.D. You don't have to obey the law. You don't have to keep them feast. He's trying to Judaize you. Right? He had this on both sides. In a way, I think he was right about a middle road, but not in the way that he was thinking about it. And here's the way I think about it, brother, which, which is that it's not a salvation issue because 
he is a merciful Elohim. So maybe you don't know his name, but uh, you know, if you believe in Mashiach, and even if you don't know Mashiach's name, and you are living by the pattern, yeah. then you are saved. You're saved. You're right. You're not keeping covenant, but you are saved. Now and we're, we're rewarded. We got right? the people who don't keep the covenant are the goyim, right? Even the goyim are saved. What we're talking about with the name and keeping covenant, following the calendar, and all that stuff—that's for the Nazarene. That's that's. And it's also it puts you in a different status in the kingdom. Yeah, it's a higher level of kodesh than the goyim. That's right. Yeah. And then, you know, even further still is the Kodashim, right? The, the, the elect. So, um, you know, so it's, it's like you say, it's not a salvation thing, yeah. but so they can both be right. Right. He, this, from the standpoint of the Goyim, he's correct. He, you know, you, you don't need all that, but if you love Elohim and if you read the stuff in what we just said about Isaiah 58, then you do these things because it pleases Elohim, and then you are blessed further, right? The threefold blessing, not just why would you stop at the half a blessing, you know? <laughs> I, have a, I have a story that I can relate actually around the name, but um, if I tell it to you and you post this video on YouTube, your channel will get taken away probably. <laughs> I, can, I, can I can pause that. <laughs> 